Hello, and welcome to the Knights of the Nightmare Let's Play. This is video 26, covering scene 22. Last time, with Maria along with us, we pushed deeper into the castle and came across some monsters that we defeated. At the end, we ran face to face with Melissa once again for the third time. I don't know what she wants, but she's not going to stop us from going further into the castle, so let's take care of her. Alright, let's see what we got here. There's quite a bit of clutter on the screen as per norm. Let's see, we have a duelist here, Colleen. We have her key item, so we'll be able to recruit her. A wizard here, a Baltar. And once again, we have a yellow banner, so we must have his key item. There's an NPC hiding here behind Melissa up in the corner. We have his key item. Another NPC, and look, it's just a little kid, so some kid got killed. But we have his key item as well. Uh, Maria is back, thankfully back with her 7.77 vitality, and of course, fucking Melissa. Now there's a new type of obstacle on the field too, and it's gonna cause some havoc, so let's check it out. Uh, I'm highlighting a neutral tome, and the tip is when you land a neutral attack. Now it also has a key item inside it, so it's an object on the field with an elemental affinity, but uh, it's trying to indicate something will happen if we hit it with the same element that the book is. Uh, there's Actually, a total of four on the field with different elements, and they all have key items. So, we're going to have to uh, look into this and see what happens. So, let's get some key items loaded up so we can recruit our knights. Alright, then we'll get some weapons loaded up. Uh, Colleen, the duelist, she's going to go for that Sanctity Tome, so I gave her a Sanctity Weapon. And Baltar, the wizard, he's going to stay perched up there, and he'll be able to nuke the lower area, so I'll give him a Neutral Rod. Now, Colleen's route is going to be up that way, and then she'll be able to hit the Tome, and hopefully um, claim the high ground, so we can have some kind of a vantage point when we actually fight Melissa in earnest. However, we have to do our chores first, as usual. Colleen's referring to a duelist we recruited, so no, Nina is dead. Okay, key items delivered, knights recruited. Let's get this show on the road. And here come the tomes with their attack. They launch some pages into the air. Really clogs up the screen fast. Alright, trying to get that sword to Colleen. There she's charging up and hitting it with a sanctity weapon. And it immediately destroys the tome and also uh, lets the key item out. So, okay, uh, we know how to get rid of those books now. Alright, Colleen continues up to get a better spot to attack from. And now Baltar can go ahead and hit that neutral tome. Okay, key items gotten, and then we wanted to deal with neutral pages flying in the air. So I got hit and ended the round. Not my best work, but we got some key items. Okay, the boss lives on. And both those books immediately respawned. Son of a bitch. Uh, only a weapon in that one, and only a weapon in that one. So I don't need to worry about getting key items out of them, but they're still going to hurl shit into the air for me to dodge. And the uh, elemental affinity of one of them changed, so I'm going to have to deal with that too. Okay, the NPCs have their key items loaded up. Colleen, as a duelist, is completely worthless in that spot. She can't face downward. So I go ahead and throw in Dreyas. And that's a pretty good spot for an archer. He's at an elevated position, so he'll be able to charge faster than normal. 
Um, hopefully he'll be able to cover some good ground. Um, next I'm going to worry about those other two tomes and try and get the key items out of them. So I go ahead and load up a, a darkness weapon for Maria to use. I tend to default to duelist weapons when I want Maria to do something. Uh, I'm not really sure why, just easier I guess. Lillian is another duelist that we've recruited, so she has since died. Alright, and with that we have delivered all our key items. We can focus on getting the new key items and finishing off the boss. I shall smite thee. So Baltar is just trying to clear out some of the tomes. Moving Marie into position. Okay, Darkness Tome down. Out came the key item. I'm going to try and get Maria into the position to get towards the other tome. And then she gets a good opportunity to gather some gems here. I'm getting a little low on my magic points. And oh, those beautiful gems getting away from me. But now Maria's in position. <laughs> Man, you can tell I'm really jittery playing this, the way the wisp is just flipping out. Alright, Maria's in position. She doesn't have the right elemental weapon equipped to deal with that tome, but we'll get it next time. So, in the meantime, Baltar's just gonna get some pot shots off. Oof. I don't know why I felt the need to dip down and grab that bird, but it ended the round for me. Alright, one more key item gotten. And the boss lives on. So that lightning tome still has a key item. Um, that tome we just destroyed respawned with a weapon. Same with this one and that one too. So all tomes have weapons except for the lightning one. Now fortunately, because we don't have any more key items that we have to deliver, uh, it frees up my inventory so I can load weapons to hopefully cover as many tomes as I can. Okay, Maria is ready to go. Go ahead and throw on a darkness wand for Baltar so he can get that darkness tome in the corner. Alright, immediately go to Maria so she can hopefully take out that book before it can launch any pages into the air. And down it goes. Nothing to do now but clear up the rest of the books and then beat on Melissa for a little bit. Nice, okay, the ice tome is removed. Now we'll just pound on Mosa a bit. Um, I didn't realize it at the time, but that red book is actually out of Drace's range, so we'll just have to live with it being there. And I only get 47% damage here with Maria, but I decided to take it. Okay, here comes Maria's super move. Her rage meter had filled up. Oh god. And Maria's special move where she traps me inside a circle. Um, I thought I had gotten it off the interrupt, but nope, here I am. Stuck. Doody doody doo. -dee -doo.
Now here I can't get 100% damage on Melissa, and I get stubborn and I decide, you know what, fuck it, I'm going to wait until she moves into range. So just sit tight, Dreyus. Uh, in the meantime, if I get struck again, it's going to end the round because I don't have enough time to survive the attack. And here she goes for another attack. Come on. All right. Now, oh my god, she's attacking again. Come on. All right, here she comes. Oh my god. Well, it's a matter of pride now. Finally, we get her. Yeah, we got 100% damage on that. Nice. And she immediately <laughs> takes me out at that point. I'll accept that. Alright, there should be a tome where Melissa is right now, but because she's occupying the space, it couldn't respawn. So thanks to fat-ass Melissa, we don't have to worry about one of the books. The other three are all present and accounted for, though, of course. So I'm switching weapons around so that my knights can cover whatever they can reach with the correct affinity. And here I'm still failing to understand that the red tome is out of Dreyas' reach. And it looks like that lightning tome has a key item inside it, so I need to be sure to get that, of course. Engage. So that's my first thing to do. There, yeah, fuck books. Everyone else is going to clean up the remaining books, or whatever they can reach, I suppose I should say. Oof, ouch. And here comes Melissa's special move again, and I once again fail to interrupt it. Doody doody do. There we go. And at this point, the round is more or less lost. I took too much damage, so I decided to salvage what I can by getting some gems. Alright, pretty bad round. In fact, check Melissa's health to the left. She gained health. She regenerated more than I had taken away. So, yikes. Fortunately, Melissa's in the same position, so that tome couldn't respawn. In the meantime, all the other tomes on the field have only weapons inside, no more key items. Uh, we're still going to clean them up the best we can, though, just so I don't have to deal with all that shit on the screen. Alright, Melissa's rage meter is filled up. And I don't want to get stuck uh, with a charge, so I go ahead and release Maria, even though I only got 50% damage. Oh god. Ugh, 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 change! Set my enemy 
I was hopeful that the splash damage would carry over to that fire tome, but unfortunately it didn't. Alright, Melissa's out of range, so I just put Dreyas on hold, and she does her rage move yet again. Oh, ouch. Nice solid hit by Maria. Here comes Maria's special move again. And I actually interrupted it this time, but it didn't matter because I had uh, been struck by a bird. So the round ended. So Dreas got left hanging. He was on charge, but uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to use him. Alright, the boss lives on. This is round six of seven. So we need to hurry up and get her killed. Um, she didn't occupy that space of the tome, so it has respawned. It only has a weapon inside, but it's going to hurl shit into the air. So we'll deal with it. Alright, Dreyas easily taking out that tome on top. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Melissa with the uh, same attack that destroys the ice tome. And at this point, I'm uh, pretty stressed out, so I decided to do something a little desperate. I tell Maria, alright, we're taking the sword to the max, we're gonna overcharge it. Let's just lay into her. Melissa, if you could take a step to your left, please. Oh, oh fuck, she's doing her super move. Oh fuck. Oh fuck me. I don't have any more magic points. Oh fuck. And there it is. Down goes Melissa. Down goes Melissa.
Here on the inventory screen, I didn't do anything too noteworthy. Um, I did realize that, oops, I didn't level up Johan to his max. He was only at level 28 when his max was 29. So I went ahead and leveled him up that one last time. Now, even with him at max level now, his vitality is only 10. Uh, that's going to come back to haunt us. We're going to have to do something about that before too long. Unfortunately for Johan, he sees a lot of action because he's our main warrior. So we use him to smash most of the stuff, and on top of that, He's generally just a good fighter, so he gets to see a lot of action. And as a result, his vitality is going to be constantly dropping. So he's going to need a steady source of transholes to keep him running. And that's going to have to be addressed at some point. Thank <laughs> you. 
And here we are with more monsters to kill. Uh, this next scene is a very important one, and as you can see, there's a lot of junk on the screen, which is pretty much normal these days, but there's quite a lot to contend with. I'll get into it in a little bit more detail in a minute. However, after we beat Melissa, what happened? Maria just took off and left us again. She just left us. So she got excited when she saw Melissa running off and chased after her. So Maria's gone again. Uh, we're on our own. Now, we all saw how instrumental Maria was in that last fight. It really sucks that she's gone, but there's nothing we can do about it, so let's just forge on. During the flashback, we didn't see anything too shocking. Uh, we saw that Yelma was responsible for the armor that Gunther was wearing um, when he became corrupted, and we'd already known that. Cape Horn comes walking and says, oh shit, that's the king's armor. But it wasn't really truly the king's armor. It was a facsimile that Yelma had created using magic of the underworld. Now in the last cutscene we saw, when she was talking to Zolganark, he said, hey, get over here, what are you doing? And she said, well, I'm busy, I'm researching the new magic you taught me. So Yelma is certainly profiting from knowing Zolganark. Uh, he's teaching her new tricks, he's giving her new power. So at least that explains part of her motivation. Anyway, back to the flashback. Uh, Yelma has cursed this armor and just told Cape Horn, you know, if you order Gunther to wear this, then he'll be our servant. And the rest, I suppose, is history. Now, I know I keep flashing back and forth here, but back to that previous cutscene, uh, when Yelma was describing, yeah, I'm busy researching the magic you gave me. Uh, at that time, Zolganart gave her a job to do. He said he wants the corpse of the king. And the reason why is because he knows that the king is the arbitrator, and he thinks that he can get the power from the corpse to break the bonds that's keeping him in King's Hall right now. So he sent Yelma on that mission, and she accepted it. As far as the cutscene we just saw is concerned, um, she went and talked to a woman in a prison. In Innocence Prison. Wow, nice. At any rate, um, she says, how's your wound? She later identifies this person as Algeri. Now, we've heard that name before. A few scenes ago, there was a flashback in which a duelist, Frabella, said she was going to follow Algeri into the Western land. And when asked why, she said, Algeri is suspected of being a spy sent to infiltrate us. She also says that the king and Algeri had a close relationship. Now, if we go back to our current cutscene, Yelma pretty much corroborates all of that. She says that you fell in love with him foregoing your duty. So, oops, you're supposed to spy on the king, but you fell in love. That's like the number one rule of spies, I think. But at any rate, yes, it seems to have happened. And in fact, the king was in love with her as well. Now, Algeri certainly reacted to that, so I think we can assume that it's true. Next, uh, Yelma says, so look into my eyes and I'm going to tell you your mission now. So it seems as though Yelma is pawning off her job of getting the corpse of the king to Algeri. At any rate, now then we find ourselves in the castle even deeper, with monsters who want to kick our ass. That's nothing new. However, as I mentioned, this is a peculiar stage. Uh, it's a, actually a very important stage. It's scene 23, and if you look to the top, you can see that we actually have 23 turns to accomplish it. Um, this scene will play a huge role in what ending we get. So it's going to be long and drawn out. I have a feeling it's going to be quite a long video. Um, I'll discuss all the merits of it and what we're trying to accomplish when that time comes. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.